Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss operational amplifier IC741. This is myself, Harshal Dandagawad. Now, operational amplifier IC741, it is the 8 pin IC. It is dual line in package. Here, pin number 2 is inverting, pin number 3 is non inverting terminal, pin number 4 and pin number 7 both are supply. Pin number 7 is required plus 15, pin number 4 is required minus 15. Here, pin number 1, 5, and 8. These three pins are no connection. Now, the circuit symbol of operational amplifier IC741 is this. Here, it is inverting terminal, non inverting terminal. It is pin number 2, it is pin number 3. Pin number 7 is required plus VCC. Pin number 4 is required minus VCC. Pin number 6 is required. 6 is output. Operational amplifier. OPAM IC741 is called operational amplifier because OPAM can be capable of lot of applications like that. It can performing the mathematical operation such as addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, integration, differentiation, as well as the same IC. It is act as comparator, oscillator, filter, rectifier. That's why it is called operational amplifier. What do you mean by the amplifier? If the amplifier which amplifies the 10 times of input signal as shown in the diagram the input amplitude is a small one if amplitude is increased the output amplitude is increases up to the 10 times now next one ideal ideally the op amp has the following parameters the infinite gain the output is depend upon the input and feedback it is their gain is infinite next one is infinite input impedance Ensure that no current is flowing through the input terminal. Next one, infinite bandwidth extending from zero to infinity. That means it can amplify the DC signal also. Zero output impedance. Ensure that the amplifier is unaffected by the load. Last one parameter, the voltage and current offset. Ensure that the input is zero the output will also zero now in op-amp there is the two types of input one is known as differential mode input another one is known as common mode input in the differential mode input we can amplify the difference of a inverting and non-inverting terminal and in the common mode signal we can amplify the average of the signal mostly we can amplify the difference of input signal block diagram operational amplifier it is a consisting the four major block the first one block is the dual input balance output differential amplifier. The two input are inverting and non-inverting terminal. Now next one, second one stage is intermediate stage. It is the dual input unbalanced output differential amplifier. Now next one is a level shifting stage. It is the emitter follower with the constant current source. And the last one block is complementary class B push pull amplifier. This is the overall about the block diagram of operational amplifier. Now next one characteristic the first one characteristic of operational amplifier is input offset current the difference between the input current in such way that the output voltage is equal to zero is known as input offset current next one parameter is input bias current the average of the current in apply in such way that output voltage is equal to zero is known as input bias current next one parameter is input offset current drift the change in input offset voltage uh, current to the change in temperature is known as input offset current drift next one input offset voltage the potential difference between input voltage in such way that output voltage is equal to zero is known as input offset voltage next one input offset voltage drift it is the ratio of Change in input offset voltage to the change in temperature is known as input offset voltage drift. Next one parameter is input resistance. The effective resistance between two input terminal when the operating in open loop mode. This is known as this is known as input resistance. Next one characteristic is output offset voltage. When the input terminal is connected to the ground input terminal is connected to the ground then output, how much of amount of output voltage is generated this is known as in output offset voltage 
bandwidth the maximum frequency over which the output can swing e easily is known as bandwidth then another one definition of bandwidth is upper limit to the lower limit output resistance the effective output resistance when it is in without feedback in mode is known as output resistance power supply rejection ratio it is the ratio of in change in input offset voltage to the supply voltage is known as power supply rejection ratio ideally is required zero cmrr cmrr stand for common mode rejection ratio it is the ratio of it is the ratio of differential mode gain to the common mode gain this is known as input a uh, common mode rejection ratio now next one slew rate the change in output voltage with respect to the time is known as a slew rate now this is the chart in which there are the ideal parameter ideal parameter of op-amp and actual parameter of practical op-amp first one voltage gain voltage gain ideally is infinite practically 2 into 10 raised to 8 bandwidth is ideal op-amp is infinite practically is 1 megahertz input resistance is infinite practically 2 meg uh, 2 mega ohm output resistance is 0 it is 75 ohm practically cmrr ideally infinite practically 90 db PSRR is 0, practically it is 150 hold per, micro hold per hold, input offset is 0, IC 741 practical value is 6 milli hold, input offset current ideally required 0, practical is 200 nano ampere, slew rate required 0, practical is 0.5 hold per micro second, input to the output phase shift is 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity. Now next one concept is virtual ground. Now this is very important concept in operational amplifier is virtual ground. So let us see what is meant by virtual ground. As shown in this diagram, here non-inverting terminal is connected to the ground, inverting terminal is left open which is connected to the resistance R1 and feedback resistance is R2. According to the, according to the output voltage formula V0 is equal to gain multiplied by differential voltage. Here, the gain of operational amplifier is infinite ideally. If we rearrange this equation, VID is equal to V0 upon AV is equal to V0 divided by infinity is equal to 0. That means the VID is equal to 0. So what do you mean by the VID? Here VID is the differential voltage between input terminal of an op-amp, inverting and non-inverting non and inverting V2 minus V1. If we put the value V2 minus V1 is equal to 0, that means V2 is equal to V1. As shown in this diagram, V2 is connected to the ground potential. That means V2 is equal to zero potential. That means the V1 also forcing op-amp the ground potential. This is called the virtual ground concept. In this case, we are not connected actually ground the inverting terminal, but op-amp internal forcing the ground potential. This concept is known as virtual ground concept. Now next one, feedback. In operational amplifier, there is a two kinds of feedback. One is a negative feedback, another one is a positive feedback. When the feedback power is out of phase to the input signal is known as negative feedback, positive feedback. When the feedback power is in phase with the input signal, it's called positive feedback. Negative feedback block diagram. Op-amp is act as inverting amplifier. When the input signal is applied, to the inverting terminal is known as inverting amplifier. Now let us see what is the inverting amplifier. As shown in this diagram, non-inverting terminal is connected to the ground. Inverting terminal is connected to the power supply. If the supply is connected to the inverting terminal, we can getting the output is inverted in form. That means if we apply the positive signal, we can get inverted form of the output. How much amount, what is the output voltage gain formula of inverting amplifier? V0 is equal to minus RF upon R1 into V in. According to the virtual ground concept, the potential difference VID is equal to 0. That means V2 minus V1 is equal to 0. That means v V1 is equal to V1, V2. This is the first one equation. As shown in this diagram, as shown in this diagram, the non-inverting terminal is connected to the ground. That means the V2 is equal to the zero potential. Here, this is the V1. This V1 is developed due to the input voltage V1 and V in voltage and their output voltage. So V in V1 is generated according to the potential divider rule here R1 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by output voltage plus 
the potential across this R2 due to the V input. That means R2 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V in. This is the third one equation. Now we are going to compare this 1, 2, 3 equation. After the comparing, the R1 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V output is equal to minus RF R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into V in. Now, after rearranging this equation, the V output, that means V output is equal to these both are get cancelled R2 divided by R1 multiplied by V in. So that means output voltage is depend upon these two resistance value R2 and R1. According to the our requirement, we can amplify the input signal with respect to the output. This is about the inverting amplifier. This is a waveform. If the positive waveform is applied into the inverting amplifier, we can getting the inverted form of the output. Now next one is a non-inverting amplifier. This is the diagram of non-inverting amplifier. If the signal is applied to the non-inverting terminal, this is known as non-inverting amplifier. So let us see the der derivation of non-inverting amplifier. In this case, if the signal is applied to the non-inverting terminal, we can getting the non-inverted non -inverted form of the output. Here the output equation V0 is equal to minus. Here V0 is equal to 1 plus RF of an R1 multiplied by V in. This is output formula for this non-inverting amplifier. According to the virtual ground concept, VID is equal to 0. That means the potential difference V2 minus V1 is equal to 0. That means V1 is equal to V2. According to this virtual ground concept, already we have talk. Now next one. The V2 potential across this terminal is equal to the input potential. Now, what about the V1 potential? The V1 potential is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V output. Now, equation 2 and 3 is compared with respect to the 1. After this one, the V in is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V0. We are arranging, rearranging this equation. V0 is equal to R1 plus R2 divided by R1 into V in. V output is equal to 1 plus R2 divided by R1 into V in. So this is the output formula for our non-inverting amplifier. Here, if the positive signal is applied into the input side of in non-inverting terminal, the same phase of the signal we can getting to the output side. The another one application of operational amplifier, the op amp is act as an adder. If V1, V2, V3 is applied to the input side, we can getting the output equation in addition in form. This is the one of the application of operational amplifier. Now next one, op amp is act as a subtractor. Op amp is also subtracting the two input voltage. That means it generates the output. It is V2 minus V1. Next one, schematic trigger. The sinusoidal waveform is converted into the square shape of waveform. This is known as schematic trigger. This is the actual waveform of a schematic trigger. Next one application is unit gain amplifier. How much amount of input voltage exactly same amount of voltage it will be generated to the output side. The non-inverting term is connected to the supply and pin number 6 is directly connected to the pin number 2. This type of connection is known as unit gain amplifier or voltage follower circuit. Thank you all of you.